this is my broken KRK Rocket 8 amplifier. And as you can see, it is in mint condition. Caution, risk of electrical shock. Do not open. I didn't listen. <laughs> Welcome back everybody. Today I am working on my KRK Rokit 8. The bottom speaker wasn't making any sound anymore. So I got my cordless drill and opened it up and check what's inside to figure out how to repair it. That's what you usually do. Nice sounds. Here we see HF, high frequency, which means this is the low frequency. Unplug those first. So we can easily move it around. We can see it right away. That does not look good. That resistor in the middle between two capacitators. That is one I need because it looks terrible. So let's remove the entire circuit board so that we can easily replace the broken components. But the thing that kept bothering me was the fact that both my speakers left and right were broken at the same time. I thought it might be a smart idea to check my electrical circuit at home. And as you can see my earth leakage circuit breakers are still working. But nevertheless, it still looked like it was a grounding problem. I thought the socket wasn't grounded, and so I decided to touch the ground. And while I was touching the ground, my elbow hit the radiator and I got shocked. Okay, so now I was quite sure that it was the grounding. And the cellar is on a different group, so as a solution, I decided to grab an extension cord from the cellar. Okay, okay, and now we're gonna act like a true electrician. What we're gonna do is check out our voltage. First thing we have to do is make sure that we have 240 volts. And as you can see, that is the case. Okay, now I'm gonna teach you something new. In alternating currency, you have the line and the neutral and the ground. The line always has a potential of 240 volts and the neutral should have a potential of zero volts. And as you can see on my digital multimeter, this is a good outlet. This one is connected to the seller and well, it's working as it's supposed to work. We were essentially using this extension cord and if we connect the ground and radiator, we should have zero volts. Okay, and now we're gonna do a reading on that outlet. And we are supposed to get exactly the same reading that we just got. Put it on the ground. And as you can see, we are nowhere near the zero volts. 50 volts. So right now we should get the same readings. Let's put it in. And let's check it if it has electricity, plus and minus. Should get a reading of 240, yeah. That's nice. I don't know if it's plus or minus, but we should get a reading of either 0 or 240. What are we getting? 50, 40, 43, 50, 50 volts. Weird. So that's weird. I put it on the other one, and we should either get 0 or 240. 170. What's going on here? 175. I think it's broken. And why do I think it's broken? Take this out. Put the ground on the ground. Now we're going to measure the potential difference between the grounding in my socket and the grounding of my radiator. And it's supposed to be zero. We are not supposed to have any voltage here. This voltage that we see right here is the voltage that I felt on my arm. 50 volts. Very nice. Okay, okay. Let's get back to my amplifier. Let's have a look at this circuit board. We gotta figure out which components we have to order online because we wanna fix this thing ourselves. Okay, and if we check the bottom side of our circuit board, we can see some corrosion. We can see that some components are definitely broken. We have to measure the size of each of the components and we start with measuring the capacitators. And as you can see, the capacitators were 2.2 centimeters wide. We have to measure the height, and the height is 3.2 centimeters. So now we know the size of our capacitator. Check the other capacitators as well. I went online and ordered the right capacitators. This is the shopping list. It might be handy for some of you guys. As you can see, very cheap components. Two days later, I got my package. A new soldering station, a third hand, a couple of components. Capacitators, well, this is the big capacitor and some small capacitors, some resistors. Well, that's all. And this is essentially all that I needed. These are uh, the new components. As you can see, very nice, very good looking, very shiny. And this is my third hand, my robot friend. We got some solder and desolder wire, a multimeter, and we need some alcohol. And not for drinking, only for cleaning. Okay, and maybe you're thinking, how do I differentiate between these resistors? Well, I'm gonna teach you. So you see those lines? We've got three red lines. The first red line means a two, the second red line means a two, and the third line means a 100 ohm. 
So this means 22 times 100 ohm equals 2200 ohms. And for the other resistor, we have brown, which means 1, a black that means 0, and a orange that means 1k ohm. That means 10,000 ohm. Okay, so finally we're at fixing this amplifier. So let's remove the heatsink at first and try and remove any unnecessary uh, cables because these cables are kind of in the way. You don't have to do this, but come on, I thought it would be easier. So this is the circuit board. And as you can see, those are the components that are pretty messed up. Wow. We're going to remove the old capacitators. And so these components were glued with some kind of black, sticky, gooey stuff. So I had to remove that using a knife. Well, as you can see, the circuit board is in perfect condition. Perfect. There's nothing wrong. Okay, so I started removing the resistor as well the red 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 resistor and wow perfect we're also gonna remove the other capacitators and as you can see we get a clearer look of our circuit board wow top condition and this is my desolder wire it absorbs all the tin and here we see a comparison between the old and the new components instead of buying a 1 8 watt resistor i bought a 1 quarter watt resistor that is not a problem let us first clean our circuit board because as you can see it's very messy removing old rust removing some old stuff and then cleaning it with the alcohol let's make sure it looks a lot better clean everything and well make sure there's no corrosion make sure there's no rust and don't forget to clean the bottom side as well one thing i did forget to buy was the this resistor and we're gonna check if it's still working which means 2 0 and 100 ohm so that means it's supposed to be 2k ohm okay 2k ohm well what do we see 1.95 so that's as good as 2k ohm it's still working and after it is cleaned you can put the components back in and this is a diode make sure that you have the right side down look at how nice i am doing it you can see i am a professional it looks perfect i'm quite sure that everybody that goes to school to be an electrician well they teach you exactly the way that i do it i am professional <laughs> okay don't 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 listen we have to make sure that we don't have short circuits do we get a reading we have to check if we did it correctly and if they're still working if we didn't destroy it 35 beep beep these are allowed to be connected they are these aren't allowed they are not okay these are allowed to be connected okay and these two okay let's check the resistance uh, one is 30k so it needs to go to 200k ohm okay should be 10 9 that's uh, and this should be 30 Oh. After we did those small components, we gotta do the big capacitators. That's the easy part. That, that We just did the hard part, this is the easy part. We wanted to make sure that we have all the necessary area to work on. So these bigger components are easier to solder. Now it kind of looks like I'm knowing what I'm doing. But look at how terrible I did it down there. But hey, it works. Solder, solder, solder. Oh, nice and hot. Okay, so how do you solder? I guess the best way to do it by heating both components and then adding the tin because then it will stick. Look at how it looks. It looks so much better than it did before. Wow. I didn't expect it to look that good. Let's reconnect the wires because we need those. The high frequency and low frequency wires. And now that we've done the circuit board, we can uh, reassemble our heatsink. Thermal place for heatsinks because these are dried out. It kind of looks the same. And let's make sure that we use some thermal paste because I know you guys hated it when uh, I didn't do the thermal paste the right way years ago. Well, I'm actually using the same thermal paste. Ooh. But hey, it worked. Wow, look how much better it looks. Not the bottom side, not the bottom side. Today is the final day. Hopefully, I'm gonna test it. Yeah, let's hope that I did everything correct. This was not a very hard job, but not a very easy job either. You gotta have a lot of patience. And a yes, I can do this attitude. Oh, yeah. If this thermal paste can help my CPU, then it can help my heatsink too. And I hated this this cable. It's very hard to release it because 
these guys from the KRK company, what they did was they smeared this black gooey stuff all over the place. Well, you can see a big chunk of it over here. They also had it on these, these cable connectors, which made it extremely hard to release it. So I was very mad. Good story, bro. I don't call me bro, man. I'm not your bro. Clickety clickety. They connect the cable of the low frequency stackers. All stackers sitting in the ding. I heard a bloop, and that's a good sign. Let me turn on the volume. Okay, well good. I fixed it! Why is this so light? Come on! Thank you all for watching. Hope you learned something new in this video. And if you did enjoy this video, check out some of my other videos, even though they're not about electricity. Whatever. Hey, I'm gonna enjoy my. Uh, my setup right now. Bye! <laughs>